There's this line from Demise that's kept me up all night, inspiring me to write the script for this video. When talking about the image of Zelda, Demise says something along the lines of Zelda being a bag of flesh that pales in comparison to the magnificence of Hylia. You're going to want to remember this for later. In a previous video, I said that this figure was a Zonai. I no longer think that. This guy from the latest Tears of the Kingdom trailer comes from the same race as this character in the mural. I think this guy is not a goat, and I don't think that this guy is a dog. But he does have an adorable face, so I'll give you that. I believe this guy is a dragon. Furthermore, I posited that this figure, whether he's the same as this person or not, that doesn't matter as much, had some relation to Hylia. I speculated that this image here showed us that this character and the Zelda character from the mural were equals. This is signified by the two being on equal ground in the mural. Neither of them are above or below each other, and the two are interlocking hands while having two tear-like objects above them which are oppositely parallel to each other. The position of these tiers is different from the picture displaying seven Magatama-shaped tiers all facing in the same direction. That part was right. These two, the Zelda figure and the dragon figure, are both the same and not the same. I'm going to explain why in this video. This is a Zonai mural, but this figure is not a Zonai, and I can prove that. The book Creating a Champion has the following to say about the Zonai ruins. The ruins are primarily animal themed, but with a history of the Triforce from an ancient perspective in mind. The designs are symbolic, using dragons for courage, owls for wisdom, and boars for power. From a gameplay perspective, each of the three dragons that you can find in Breath of the Wild all have a spring which corresponds to them, implying a sort of reverence or divinity to the fact that those dragons appear near those springs specifically. There's an entire Zonai area in Breath of the Wild, built specifically around the Spring of Courage, for example. From a logical perspective, it wouldn't make sense for the Zonai to build structures that call back to ancient animals representing themselves if they were dragons. That would be narcissistic and selfish of them, which wouldn't be a good look for them. I recently had an aha moment scrubbing through the Tears of the Kingdom reveal trailer. This image shows the shadow of the magical arm that has sealed Corpsdorf for thousands of years. If you look closely, this hand has more than three digits, but this image was intentionally displayed with an emphasis on the hand having three fingers, because in ancient Japan, Dragons are depicted as traditionally having three claws. Look at this picture here. This shows you just about everything you need to see on a surface level. This image was tweeted by Rinkudo. I unfortunately don't understand French, but he seems to have a decent grasp of Zelda lore. The eye markings of Feroche look exactly like the ones belonging to this dragon character. This dragon guy also has horns. He's an anthropomorphic dragon. We've seen anthropomorphic dragons before. The dragons of Skyward Sword. And the dragons of Skyward Sword have a familiar relationship with the goddess Hylia. In the Japanese text of Skyward Sword, the dragon Leneru is even labeled as an emissary of the goddess. He's a representative of Hylia. He's her liaison. Also from the latest trailer, we can see that this Zelda figure has eye markings that match the eye markings of Dragon Guy. Her markings emulate the eye markings of a dragon. So, who is this person that people are saying is Hylia? She's an ancestor of Zelda from Breath of the Wild. She's Ancient Zelda, or as I like to call her, Zonai Zelda. Some of you like to call her Basket, and I'm completely fine with that. I think that's a great nickname. If we go back to these images here, you're probably wondering why there's a picture of a moth, albeit a fake moth. Well, if I'm being transparent, the fake moth looked cute. Totally not the point. Here's some context. This moth is a specific type of moth. Its scientific name is the Bombyx mori, but you may know it as the silk moth. If you know anything about silk, it was a historical commodity. Silk was difficult to acquire and highly sought after by people, especially people of royalty. Silk comes from the silk worm, the larval stage of the silk moth. To read you an excerpt from this article in front of me, quote, Silk weaving was tied to kingship and courtly romance. These legends appear to have arisen in mainland China, 
and are likely related to the silkworm's life cycle, in which it exhibits an ability to die and be reborn into a totally different form." End quote. Additionally, the silkworm is connected to legends of what are known as weaver maidens, who were specifically female goddesses and shamans known to be immortal. What you're looking at right now is a 12th century image of the silk moth, which was known as the divine insect. It looks like a dragon. And the folklore surrounding this divine insect was that it was known to expel demons. The antennae of this silk moth align with the ears of Dragon Guy. This relationship is not accidental. In the Zelda series, specifically contained within the Japanese text of Skyward Sword, there's mention of the God Clan. I call them the God Tribe to be a little bit more Anglo-friendly. The word clan is used specifically in relation to the ancient clans of Japan, like the Imperial Clan the clan that is said to have descended from the sun goddess Amaterasu, the goddess of Japanese folklore whom Hylia represents. The imperial clan is what Hyrule's royal family is based off of. We hear mention of the god tribe twice, and as far as I know, only twice, in the Japanese version of the Zelda series. The first time is when Zelda is talking to Link when the two are reunited before Zelda has to enter her crystal slumber in order to maintain the thousand year seal on Demise. She says, despite being a creation of the gods, it was impossible for the almighty power of the Triforce to be used by the gods clan. She is speaking about why Hylia sacrificed her divine form in order to become human. Hylia sacrificed her divinity so that she would be able to use the Triforce to annihilate Demise at some point in the future. The next time we hear mention of the God's clan is after Demise is resurrected. He directly expresses his resentment toward the God's clan specifically. This is the reason Demise wants the world to be ruled by demons. It is because of his hatred and resentment toward the gods. I've sifted through just about every Japanese text from every Zelda game, with a focus on important lore. The only times the Japanese word for goddesses is ever mentioned or alluded to in the Zelda series is also two times. The English version of the Zelda games uses the word goddesses three times instead of twice. And I'll point out something interesting here. In the English versions of Twilight Princess, the forest spirit Lanayru chooses to use the word goddesses. However, in the Japanese version, the spirit uses the word gods. This is an important distinction to make, because Nintendo didn't have the plot of the Zelda series fully ironed out until much later on with consecutive Zelda games. The first time we ever hear about the goddesses is in the manual for A Link to the Past. The term used in the manual is gods instead of goddesses. This describes the same creation story that is repeated by the Great Deku Tree in Ocarina of Time, where the word gods was corrected to be the golden goddesses who created Hyrule. After that, we only ever hear about the goddess in Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild, which obviously refers to Hylia, and that's it. Those are the only two games that mention the goddess. Any other time we ever hear about deities, the word gods is used specifically. An important distinction to make is that Sheik mentions the gods instead of the goddesses when discussing the Triforce of Wisdom and the Triforce of Courage, which signifies that the words gods and goddesses have a distinct difference in the context in which they're being spoken. I'll give you a few excerpts and references. But before that, I want to give you some additional context for all of these quotes. As Fee declares at the beginning of Skyward Sword, after hearing Gaipora reveal the knowledge of the Sacred Blade that has been secretly passed from generation to generation, oral tradition is not reliable. When I was younger, we used to play the game telephone in school. A kid would whisper something to the second kid and so on and so forth, until the first kid's message reached the ears of the last kid. The goal of this game was to see if the last person to hear the message would be able to recite the exact message the first kid whispered word for word. In my experience playing this game, this goal was never achieved, and it taught an important lesson. The critical message gets lost over time, when a myth, which is also known as a legend, gets passed from generation to generation, critical passages to that message become diluted over the grand scope of time. Okay, now that you have that understanding, let's begin. The Hylians were considered to be the race closest to the gods. 
The light spirits of Twilight Princess state that they were dispatched by the gods to seal away the Twilight tribe. Shad, who is also from Twilight Princess, speculates that the Hylians didn't create Hyrule, and that there was a race closer to the gods who created the land instead. And many people believe that these sky people were the Oko. And those people are probably right. I'm making a case for the people that are closer to the gods. In fact, they are closest to the gods. And that would be the god tribe that I'm talking about. The gods were said to have flooded Hyrule when Ganon returned during the prologue of Wind Waker. These gods even chose who could build a new nation and told those chosen individuals to flee to the high mountains. In Breath of the Wild, when referring to Sheikah technology, Kato, Kado, remarks that our technology was vital in the sealing of Ganon during the calamity which occurred 10,000 years ago. Once it was hailed as the power of the gods, but it eventually came to be seen as a threat to the country. The word gods is used many more times than this, but I wanted to direct your attention to the quotes that stood out most to me, because I think they tell us a story. First, the gods are different from the goddesses. If we were to classify the goddesses, we would use the word Megami. This is the word intentionally used whenever a goddess is being discussed in Zelda lore. And by extension of that, the gods are also different from the goddess. Secondly, the gods that I'm referring to are different from what are known as Kami, who are divine beings mentioned in the Shinto religion. These Kami can take all sorts of forms and you've seen plenty of them in other Zelda games. These kami that I'm talking about are more like guardian deities, or spirits that watch over something, typically something to do with nature. A good example of these would be the four light spirits from Twilight Princess. In the Japanese text, they explicitly mention that they were dispatched by the gods. They are in servitude to the gods, just like Lanayru the Thunder Dragon was for Hylia. These kami are in servitude to an order of gods that are higher up in the godly hierarchy than they are. Get these guys out of your head. I mentioned them to provide a distinction. The gods I'm talking about are the god tribe, the gods whom these kami serve. The same gods who are referred to in all of these Zelda games. When we discuss the race closest to the gods, consider the pattern on Zelda's dress from Ocarina of Time. The Triforce symbolizes the three goddesses, or the old gods. The bird here represents the Loftwing, the bird that is associated with the royal bloodline of Hyrule, and by extension, the people of Hyrule. What's in between those two symbols? The Eye of the Sheikah. And who are the Sheikah? They are a tribe tasked by the gods, and by the goddess Hylia, to protect the royal bloodline. Now, if we look at Dragon Guy, we can see plain as day, that he has an organic Sheikah eye that is closed on his forehead. Below that is the pattern of a tear that is also symbolic of the Sheikah. Let's assume that the Sheikah eye doesn't actually symbolize only the Sheikah. Let's assume that it symbolizes actually three separate things. The eyelashes, or the three triangles, represent the three goddesses. The tear, that's what represents the Sheikah. It's the people who serve these higher entities, the goddesses, and by extension of the goddesses, the gods. That just leaves the eye in the middle. So if this tear in the Sheikah eye symbol represents the Sheikah, well then this eye represents the god tribe. And it is even opposite to the demon eye that we see in other Zelda games that no one ever talks about. This is the race closest to the old gods, with the old gods being the goddesses. And who would be the designated leader of the god tribe? That would be none other than Hylia, who is the embodiment of light and the representation of the real-life goddess Amaterasu, the sun goddess. This is my fancy way of saying that I think Hylia was a dragon goddess, and that her people are the same race that this dragon guy belongs to. This is the god tribe we've heard about in almost every game following A Link to the Past. I'll provide some general reasoning through more Japanese folklore. Dragons of Japanese culture are known to represent success, wisdom, and power. They were thought of as gods. The dragon is closely associated with the imperial family, the royal family that is represented by Hyrule's royal family. The two main colors of the Japanese dragon are blue and green. Let me repeat that. The two main colors of the Japanese dragon 
are blue and green. One more time, the two main colors of the Japanese dragon are blue and green. There's a specific Japanese legend surrounding a dragon's pearl, a relic that could be used to grant any wish. The dragons of Japanese folklore have also been able to be known to transform into humans and even reproduce with them. All of this folklore provides a historical context for the motifs seen in the Zelda series. So that's who I think the Dragon Man is, and that's what I think Zelda once was. An ancient race of dragons who served Hylia, the dragon goddess who was their leader. But now, you know them as the God Tribe. I received all of my translations from Lorulian Historian. I've known about LH for many years. The dude's a paragon, but I was only recently given the opportunity to meet him. He was an indispensable resource for making this video and he continues to be an invaluable resource to the Zelda community. If you made it this far in the video, please see my pinned comment or the description of this video. And please, please, follow this man on social media. He doesn't get enough recognition, and I would not have been able to get anywhere close to making this video without his help. And definitely consider try forcing a click on that like button. If you want more content like this, feel free to subscribe as well, followed by the bell. And please, leave scribbles so we can discuss this more. I want to hear what you think. Doing this can promote this video to others like you who crave Zelda content. And I want to put a smile on those people's faces. I'm Wiz. I'm off to catch some lightning. I'll see you in the next one.